Here we're going to find a proportion and we're asked to let P represent the percentage of all male students who would receive a grade of a B. So out of all the males, who gets a B? So let's see. So we're only concerned about the male row. And of those 42 males, 19 got a B. So that would be our sample statistic here. So to just uh, draw a picture of what's going on, anytime we have a confidence interval, uh, we're looking at a distribution of data, a sampling distribution. In this case, we're looking at a, a distribution of proportions. And when we have a distribution of proportions, the center is always going to be the sample proportion for a confidence interval. And what we need to do is then figure out what is the margin of error in the lower and the upper bound on the uh, range that we think the actual population proportion lives in. So we have a population parameter, and that's the proportion of males who received a grade of a B. We have a sample statistic, which is the actual number of males. Okay, so I'm just going to redraw some of this. So we have uh, n equals 42 for our sample size. We have x equals, and I just forgot, was it 19? 19 b. Come on. There we go. So x is equal to 19. And now we're going to make a point estimate based on that. And the point estimate is P prime, our sample proportion. And that would be 19 successes, males with a B, out of a total of 42 males. Uh, and so we're eventually going to write that as a decimal. Another thing we need to consider is we have our confidence level. And I believe that was 99%. So I'm going to redraw my picture horizontal line, my best bell-shaped curve today. Right down the middle here, I'm going to mark the sample statistic, which is 19 out of 42. And now I need to compute, somehow, a margin of error in the upper and lower bounds. So I need to figure those out. And I want 99% of samples to live in the middle here. So that would be this area here in my histogram. And then that leaves 1% for the tails to share. So each tail gets only one half of 1%. So you could write it as a fraction, or you could write it as a decimal. Half of a percent is what lives in each tail. Okay, so I want to confine to figure out what proportion values give me 99% of similar samples. All right, so now it is time to go to stat key. So stat key, let's blow this up just a little. We want a confidence interval for a proportion here. Right now we're only doing means and proportions. And we'll, instead of using their information, we'll use our own by editing the current data set. And they want to know the count, so that's the successes, that's 19 males with a B out of 42 males. And then they'll calculate the decimal version of that, so it's 0.452, so I could add that to my drawing too if I wanted to. So 19 out of 42 is approximately, oops, wrong color, weigh the equal sign when you approximate, whoa. Zero point four five two, and then I want to run a bunch of simulations on this, reselecting from my sample. So I just generate thousands of samples, and every one of the points here, by the way, is a new sample based on the original. So this particular sample right here, if you look to the bootstrap sample to the side, found twenty out of forty-two. Uh, males got to be, 
and this one over here found 24 out of 42, and this one over here found only 13 out of 42 got a B. So we're just looking at the variation in a population based on the original sample uh, by redrawing cards from a deck. So there's 42 cards in the deck, 19 of them got a B, and the rest of them didn't. And so we just draw out 42 cards one at a time, looking at them and getting a new sample each time. So right now I have 2,000 samples of 42, and these are the, each dot here is a proportion of those 42 males that got a B. And we need to get at least 5,000. I usually go six or seven. And my computer is struggling with all this technology. I guess it's time for a new computer soon. All right, let's say that's good enough today. I think it's still computing. I think we're caught up there. So then we select two tail. And then it'll go through and count all of those 6,000 samples and find out uh, where the middle 95% is. Now, I actually want 99% in the middle, so I entered 99% of the decimal. And the computer reports back to me that of those 6,000 samples, if you want to look at the middle 99% of them, the lowest uh, percent of males with a B was 26.2%, and the highest was 64.3%. So that's my confidence interval. My point estimate here in the middle is, is usually going to be similar to what the, the original sample said. So I have a point estimate of uh, 0.45, and then that's my margin. So let's see, I need to get that information into my picture. So I highly encourage you to draw pictures for each of these when you do it, because you will be required to draw pictures on your test. So practice now. All right, so let's enter this into my spreadsheet too. So we have n equals 42 to start with. We have x equals 19. That gives us a p prime of equals that 19 divided by that 42. And then we can round that down to three decimal places up for you. Come on computer, catch up. There we go. Uh, let's see, other things we need to know here is the confidence level. That was also given. That was 99%. And then according to stat key, we get a lower value of 0 0.262 and an upper value for the interval estimate, 0 0.643. Oops, I meant to type upper there. Come on. 0 0.643. So now that I have the lower and the upper, I can find the margin of error. So just to get a visualization of that, uh, we claim that this number on the left is 0 0.262 Whoa. and the number on the right is 0 0.643 and the margin of error would be the distance from the center to the edge and the way I usually find that is I find the distance all the way across and cut it in half so my error bound on this proportion would be equal to parentheses 0 0.643 minus 0 0.262, find that complete distance across, and then cut it in half. So let's see what that calculation yields. So error bound on the proportion going to equal the upper number, oops, parentheses, order of operations matters, there we go. We have to do the subtraction before we divide, so you gotta, 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 gotta have parentheses. Divided by two. So we get a margin of error of about 19%. And you might say, man, that, that's a pretty wide margin of error based on, you know, 26 and 64. And, and, it, and it is. Uh, the only, there's two ways to lower that margin of error, lower your confidence, Maybe you could go with 80% confident in this interval estimate. Uh, or you could just get a larger sample of uh, male students. Uh, 
larger the sample, you can narrow the margin of error or lower your confidence. But we usually don't want to lower our confidence too much. All right, so I think we have all the relevant information. So back to my picture. And again, please get in the habit of drawing your pictures here for each of these problems. So we have a margin of error of approximately 0 0.19, is it 02? 05. And every time you run the simulation, the numbers will be a little bit different. So just to show you that here, because again, we're drawing from a deck each time we do that. If I reset this and generate one, two, three, four, just go with 5,000 this time. And then we go count with two tails and say 99%. We'll get exactly the same numbers as before. No, <laughs> check it out. We got exactly the same numbers as before. I'm a liar. I didn't mean to lie, sorry. All right, answering the question. So in this case, we want the lower and upper bounds, and so I would enter, and be careful, sometimes these are asked for percentages, sometimes they're asked for decimals. This one says decimal, not percent. And when I click on that right there, it usually gives me a hint. I didn't get any hints today, interesting. Maybe my computer's so damn slow. 0 0.262 and 0 0.643. Uh, and if you don't get it right the first time, either you have an error or your version of drawing cards for the simulation just wasn't, the computer didn't like that particular card drawing. Because uh, again, it is a random selection each time. So just run stack key again to another six or 7,000 and hopefully it works out. If not, and you're not sure, always message your instructor. All right, take care, do good math. I'm out of here.